Yeah, I should speak in this. You, you should never say, sorry for being late. You should say, thanks for waiting. And in my case, thanks for stepping in. <laughs> uh, let me just get my computer started. Yes, okay, hang on. Okay, that's the uh, right. Haha. -ha. Hi. So, right. I'm going to talk about writing code and just getting it out there to get it tested quickly. Uh, my name is uh, Christine Gorman, and I work uh, as a programmer for Kuldemokir. And I've been writing code for a living for like, or people have been paying me on a regular basis to write code for 19 years now. Um, amazing, so I'm, I'm old. <laughs> but um, basically, so I am um, gonna talk about a particular experience that I had a few years ago. And as always happens when you talk about some kind of concrete example of, of something, it's so easy to get derailed and people start obsessing about the wrong details. Uh, because obviously there's a lot of context here. So I'm just going to start with some disclaimers about you know, what I'm not going to be talking about so we can focus on what's important, at least important to me right now. Uh, so this is not a talk about tools that can help you build solutions fast. This is not a, a techie talk about if you use this language or this framework, then you can write really quickly. This is not about that at all. And uh, you know, because honestly, it doesn't, that's not what really matters that much. You know, what matters, I mean, you can use Java, you can use Clojure, C Sharp, C++, I mean, PHP, what, it, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Use what you mostly, you know, you can use what you're comfortable with and it's gonna work for most cases. So this is not about the tools, nor is this a talk about, you know, oh, if you wanna do things quickly, you need to be this amazing 10X developer, you know, and here's how I am awesome and I managed to deliver something in, in a short frame of time frame. This is, this is not about that at all either. And I, again, most of the stuff that we do, it's not rocket science. Most of the stuff that we do, it's, it's like crud. You know, we're getting data from somewhere, we're storing it in a database, and we're reading it back out again. I mean, honestly, as I say, I've been doing this for 19 years now. You know, when I, I, was, I was delivering value 19 years ago, I had no experience, and I was still able to do stuff of value. Really, I mean, it, it, it's not about, like, you don't have to be amazing to write useful code. So the reason I want to talk about this is, again, because I have an agenda. You can tell I have an agenda, right? So, uh, and uh, people who've, uh, who know me or you know, followed me on Twitter or whatever will know that you know, I've probably spent like the last decade ranting about how we are wasting so much money and time and ah, uh, in, the, in the public sector especially. Um, developing software and this you know sadly is still the kind of recommended process for writing software in the public sector and um you know i guess most of you guys are norwegians anyway so you'll be able to read this but this is waterfall right we have a concept phase and then you have this planning phase and then you have the implementation phase and then oh within the implementation phase here you can be agile and i think there is actually a lot of work that's happened like really great work that happened recently um and like nov is a great example of how once they actually get going they are now able to deliver things effectively and things are pushed to production and we're delivering value continuously and getting feedback and, and you know and so much great stuff is happening and again especially in Nov and uh, yay <laughs> I have Nov representatives around the corner um, but you know one thing that's still a problem very often is that we you know we still have the people in charge of the money they have this idea that Oh, but you can't just start coding. You can't just, you know, we have to, we have to, we can't get there until we know what we're gonna build. You know, it's like, ah, you know, you can't, you know, we need to know what we're gonna make first. And and I, you know, like, why on earth not? You know, this is kind of this is my agenda. I really <laughs> we need to stop being so scared of writing code. You know, people have this idea that writing code, oh, that's really complicated and you need like hundreds of people and oh, it takes years and years. We, you know, we don't want to start doing that. And, you know, and I agree with that. You should, you, you should, in fact, you should delay that to so far in the future that it just never happens. You know, you should never have that big process anyway. Um, 
And, but you know, like coding, writing software, it's, it's like, you know, it's more like writing a book or, or drawing an architecture drawing, you know, because we're not actually constructing physical things. I think so much of our management, they've got us kind of, you know, in their mental models of how software development works, is like we're, we're the builders, we're like the joiners and the plumbers and we're constructing these things. And this is completely the wrong mental model. You know, like you wouldn't have, uh, like when you're drawing a house, you know, you wouldn't be like, oh, you can't just start drawing. You can't just start drawing. We don't know what the building is going to look like yet. <laughs> like that would be crazy, right? You need to have the architect needs to be hands on early on in the process to take all these ideas, all these user stories. You know, as a cyclist, I need a place to store my bicycle. So I'll be, you know, so I'll be safe and in good condition. You know, as a parent, you know, I need a large table where the kids can do crafts that's not the dinner table, so, you know, I can eat without being covered in slime. Uh, all these requirements, you need to have the architect early on to try to form those things into, put, fit them into 3D space, right, to see if it actually fits. You know, this is really essential, and that's basically what we're doing with code. We're taking the ideas of what people need, and we're trying to fit them into our kind of space, and it's important to get that work started as often as, or as early as possible. Um, anyway, blah. So, I mean, basically here, this, this, this middle thing here, this phase that they say, oh, here you can work, this phase actually doesn't exist. This is our build pipeline. Yeah, we don't have builders. We don't have, but that's our, that's like Jenkins or GitLab CI or that's our, our build, our build pipeline, our compiler. Those are our builders. We don't have that thing at all. So, um, Anyway, we, we need to just, we need to stop being so scared of writing code. The coding should be a natural part here and here. And I was like, um, in a, you know, a couple of years back, I was in a, a meeting, um, a meetup for product managers, and they were like discussing all these like tools, and I keep hearing of them, like prototyping tools and UI mockup tools. Oh, this is amazing. You can get things, you can, you know, really show the users and test, uh, test these things on users really quickly. And, um, but I mean, so, so you can with code, you know, you can actually, you know, it's actually really, it doesn't take long to write code either. You know, we should be using our code as a way to generate our specifications, you know, because code, you know, is really, al will always be better than our specifications because writing code is fun and writing specifications is really boring. So we're never going to be as good at writing specifications as we are going to be at writing code. You know, we should be using code to, um, yeah, to get stuff done. So let me get to my point uh, and my story. So basically, this happens. This my, this my crazy three-week project um, started off. I had just <laughs> resigned from the public sector. I was just so frustrated by not being allowed to, you know, speak to the users and kind of, you know, have a nice dialogue-based development process. I'd resigned, um, and I couldn't really figure out what I wanted to do. So I thought, Bob, let's just do some freelancing. And then first week, I get this um, text message from a complete stranger, you know, who says like, you know, hi, yeah, my name is this, and I got your number from, you know, a friend. And she said, you might be able to help us with some software, and do you have time the next weeks? And I said, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, it's possible. What do you need? Um, and then we we, call, we we talked on the phone. And uh, it turned out that she was working in the Drummond Kommune, and they had a summer school program that, uh, when they just needed something a bit more than just Google Forms to manage, you know, signing up for summer school. And the very important detail here: she did not ask me. She did not ask me how long will it take to make this. She didn't ask. <laughs> she she said it needs to go live in three weeks. Yeah, she <laughs> so I mean that was a constraint from the outset. And nor did she ask me how much will this cost. Now she said, this has to cost less than 50,000 knock because there was some limit in the rules of the, in the commune, the council, municipality, whatever it's called in English. They can't spend that much money. Um, or if they need to spend more than that, then they have to go through all this approval process. And they only had three weeks so that, you know, if they were going to have anything at all, it had to be below this level. And, um, and to me, I mean, this was, you know, I was like, this is perfect. This is exactly the kind of thing that I've been telling people you can do, that you can actually quickly just, you know, ma make stuff. So here was my chance to prove not only to the people, the naysayers out there, but to myself that I wasn't crazy. That you know, it was like, I knew I'd done this before, and I'm like, I, I'm sure I could do it anyway. And um, as uh, I love this quote by George Bernard Shaw, those who say it cannot be done should not interrupt those doing it. So I was like, yes, this. 
Now I'm gonna I'm gonna show him. <laughs> but anyway, so we we um we had a meeting a couple of days after this um, SMS and phone conversation. We sat down, and again, this was just pure. Did I say this? Pure lady project. No men involved. It was only it was me and two ladies from Drummond. Um, and um, and I you know made it clear from the outset that this solution will not be perfect, you know, because at this point I only had two weeks left, right? Or, uh, you know, because they, you know, I need to make it and then they need to, you know, just uh, have some days of just final verification that, it, that, that I hadn't missed anything. Um, so in that time frame, uh, <laughs> and with the budget, meaning only I really could work on it, this will not be perfect. It will not do everything imaginable, you know, but it will work for most cases. You know, and I'll keep you posted. I'll be deploying this, you know, to some kind of server so you can have a look and make sure that uh, I'm moving in the right direction. You know, so I mean, but this is um, so they and they were fine with that. They were fine with that. So um, I went back from the meeting and I thought, okay, well, let's get going. And so technology-wise, and this again, this isn't you know, I'm not trying to. This isn't a plug for my choice of technology or anything. I'm just going to be honest about like what I did, um, because uh, even to me that was kind of interesting how it uh, <laughs> ended up working. So in the front end, um, I had just been involved in an Angular uh, project, um, and I've mostly worked backend stuff. So I didn't have much like single-page application uh, experience at all. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just learn this from scratch. I really want to, you know, I, I need to get my head around how this all works, you know. And um, and I hadn't really, I hadn't really loved the Angular experience. I thought I'm not gonna use that. And then there were so many choices out there, you know. There's like, oh no, you should use Elm, you should use React and Webpack, you should use Closure Script, you know, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna start with absolutely nothing at all, and then I'll build it up from there, and I'll see what I need, you know. So I just had. Um, um, I had uh, just HTML with some JavaScript fetching a JSON from my back end. Um, and I was expecting this to be horribly painful, right? I, was, I wasn't expecting this to be a fantastic solution. But, um, but in the end, um, that's, uh, I, I actually didn't, you know, that, that, that's how it ended up in the end, too. And it, worked, it actually worked fine. I'll, I'll, get back to, um, I'll get back to that later. But that was a surprise to me, too. I used, um, I used underscore for templating uh, because I needed to, you know, get the JSON into HTML. Um, and that's, that, that, that was all it ended up being. So even, even in today's modern age, e web pages can actually work without lots and lots and lots of JavaScript. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, so for the, for the back end, again, uh, same thing. Um, I just thought, you know, tell with it. Let's just, let's just try to make this as low tech as possible. You know, and I didn't want to have lots of frameworks and libraries that I'd get weird errors from that I couldn't, you know, understand properly. So I thought, you know, let's just have as little as possible. So I had a Jetty server um, and uh, with servlets uh, serving JSON and um, yeah, and I, I had my, my I used my own database framework for uh, speaking to the database, <laughs> which worked beautifully. Um, but again, you know, you don't have to. I'm not saying do this at home, but uh, you actually can make software without Spring and Hibernate and every imaginable framework. It's possible. Uh, for the design, I, I, you know, I just used Bootstrap. I suck at CSS, and uh, I, you know, it just makes me so angry whenever I have to try to make things look nice. So I just, you know, totally just, blah, just use Bootstrap. And here's what I ended up with. So, um, right. So here's the front page. Underneath here um, was a list of all the courses um, and um, and how many people had signed up. So you put your email address. You click register. You'd get an email t telling you click here to sign up, and you'd be brought to this beautiful page isn't it wonderful <laughs> um, and you know this is this is just plain HTML there's nothing going on here if you selected what school what year the uh, student would be in these would be filtered to you know give you the appropriate courses for that level uh, but apart from that nothing is happening here at all uh, and you know I might say it's not very beautiful but it works and you know what it's very environmentally friendly too I mean there you know we should be talking about lots of there's so many of these um, you know modern web things you know there's so much going on in the web page that your CPU is like very uh, way too busy so this is environmentally friendly and also what's fun about not doing anything at all <laughs> very good accessibility is html is built for accessibility i mean that's what html is kind of made for it's for it to be a nice semantic markup that uh you know that can be rendered with pictures or with sound or whatever so by actually not putting any fancy stuff at all in there you know again contrasts too black white it doesn't get more <laughs> obvious than that and uh there 
you know, anyway, so uh, just not doing stuff, not only do you save time, but you also get all of these things for free. And so much time, like so much of the reason why, you know, projects or coding can take so long is that people start off doing too much fancy stuff. You know, they're embarrassed by the simplicity. You know, making a form like that, people are like, oh no, this is kind of embarrassing. It looks like I can't code. <laughs> you know, and then they end up making things like, have you seen this one here? Hang on, this is, yeah, look, look at that. Look at that, have you seen that? <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is amazing. Like, how was that? I don't know. But someone obviously spent lots of time on that. Like, use a bloody radio button, for goodness sake. You know, yeah, I mean, don't try to show off with all the weird stuff you can do with JavaScript. Just leave it, you know, just let it be basic, honestly. You know, like, this whole project took me, like, two weeks of coding time. I was once on a project that spent, like, an entire three-week sprint. Two people spent an entire week making date pickers. And I'm sure lots of other people have spent lots of time making fancy date pickers, right? Uh, and just use the default date picker, you know? <laughs> we, and the, the fun thing, actually, with, the, with that project, they spent, like, two people, three weeks on date pickers. And, and uh, to be honest, like, I was amazed. Those date pickers were super awesome. You know, but it ended up with, it ended up with causing, like, crisis meetings uh, afterwards with the management, the, you know, the contra uh, contractor's management and the customer's management. They were fighting because, you know, the date pickers, so one of them had forgotten to put in the default language. You know, so one of the date pickers said today, and the other one said e dog, and then the pixels weren't perfect. You know, and then it turned into so much, so so much argument, you know, if they'd have just used the damn defaults, no one would have, you know, no one would have questioned it at all. We spend way too much time trying to, you know, do fancy things. Just leave it to the basic stuff. This is ugly and boring, but it's, it, it works and it's, you know, yeah, anyway. Just uh, so that, <laughs> so that was uh, this form. Um, and then uh, after you'd uh, signed up, you'd get this list. Here, I've signed up my dogs. Um, so <laughs> you can see what courses they signed up for, uh, and you could go in and change them, and then you could, you know, add a new one or, or delete them, and and uh, and that was pretty much that was pretty much it, you know. So uh, the, here are the basically the pages. You had a front page, sign up page, summary. Those I showed you, and then for the admins, uh, you could like log in and get a list of who'd signed up and that kind of stuff. And and I made it also very clear that you you know, I mean, you might to think those pages I just showed you were not very pretty. And I told them, like, look, I'm not going to put any effort at all in making the back office functionality look pretty. There's no, because this is just for the two of you, and, you know, you're going to be lowest in priority for prettiness and, and whatever. And they were fine with that. So, um, but anyway, so this was the entire thing. Uh, and I also... <coughs> Organize the code, which I think is a good idea in any case. Try to isolate, um, you know, each kind of user experience thing as its own, you know, group things together. I mean, so often I get into, go to projects and I see code group like this, you know, where you have, here are all the models, here are all the views, here are all the controllers, or whatever software design pattern you're using. Um, and this, this just totally, this totally sucks. Uh, don't, don't do this. <laughs> this uh, also, yeah. Anyway, uh, I don't have much time. But basically, so um, here is uh, the what uh, my uh, my project looked like. I had a uh, which was you know putting in your email address. And then you had a uh, which was that one beautiful form. Pomelings uh, lista was a list of uh, where you see all the people or all the your kid the kids you'd signed up or dogs um, and <laughs> and then you have the list of the individual courses with who'd signed up and the list of the courses and each one of, you know within each of these packages you know there i had obviously separate classes that represented the various you know the design patterns used but you know organizing your code like this makes it so much easier to come in and work on it afterwards like you know i've had like requests to update the odd thing, uh, you know, the following years. And um, it is so easy to go in and know, you know immediately where you're gonna, where you're gonna put stuff. When they say, oh, uh, we, you know, we need this extra functionality in the, you know, the list of courses, you know, whoop, you know, immediately, uh, this is where everything's gonna be. You know, when I change things in here, I know that none of the things I do here is gonna have any impact on any of those things. You know, just knowing that immediately makes it just so much, easier and it just feels a lot, yeah, anyway, it's just, even with tests in place, it's just really nice to have isolated things um, um, in their own packages. And also, like, if you're, you know, if you, if you start off organizing your code like this, it makes it so much easier to break it into separate parts. You know, if this started to grow and grow and grow, you could, you know, more easily split things out into sensible units. So just organizing your code by how it's used 
just you know a good idea all around. Um, anyway, I'm running out of time, so <laughs> so much of uh, you know when when people think about getting things to production, um, so many people seem to assume that this necessarily means quick hacks. You know, oh, you're just hacking and ah, uh, you know, and this is certainly not what I want you to be taking away from this. You know, my message here isn't just hack something together and get it get it out there. Doing stuff quickly. It's not about doing things badly, you know? Writing good code doesn't take longer than writing bad code. Doing things quickly is more about, you know, all the things you do not do. You know, all the things that, you know, just focus on the important stuff. You know, most of your applications, you know, like 90%, uh, if you solve 90% of the user needs, you know, really well, and then you can let the remainder of the 10% can be like manual processes and outside the computer system entirely. You know, if you, if you focus and, uh, figure out all the things you do not have to do straight away, you'll save so much time. You know, and uh, in my case, I mean, things that were not there, um, like <laughs> in the initial, in the initial um, uh, application, I didn't even have proper like client-side validation. You know, if you'd have pasted in the entire works of Shakespeare in the name field and clicked submit, you would have got an error page, you know? Um, I didn't have like, you know, are you sure you want to change? I didn't have stuff like that. I didn't have useful error messages from the server. It would just be like an error has occurred. There was no beautiful custom design. You couldn't change your email address. There was no waiting list functionality. There were no real-time updates in the UI. There were, you couldn't administer your admin users. They had to ask me to manually put one in. Um, you couldn't look up the students by name. Uh, there was no page for the teachers. You know, there were so many things that I didn't do. You know, there's so many things I didn't do. And I'm not saying these things are don't have any value, but I'm just saying you don't have to do everything straight away. And if you focus, you can get stuff out there quickly. You can get the important functionality out there quickly, and then you can validate whether or not, you know, am I on the right track at all? You know, because that's so often what happens. Once you push stuff to production, you realize that, shit, I solved the wrong problem. And you want to figure that out as early on as possible. You know, so really focus. You don't have to have every possible thing in place for it to be um, a useful program. And uh, I have run out of time, haven't I? Yes. <laughs> right. So I will uh, leave it there and just start coding. <laughs> Thank you.